And the star of Record of Strange Things is the story itself. Intelligent people write intelligent script. That actually makes sense. Hello, you're watching Avenue X, where a junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. 异物志 The Record of Strange Things is a 36 episodes web drama that has recently finished airing on platform Tencent. If no weirder things occur for the rest of 2022, this is likely to be the most unique Chinese drama. And here are the reasons. First, this is An old, old drama. It has been put on shelf, refrigerated for over six years. It was actually made back in 2016. That was before this channel. I started it back in 2017. Second unique thing: it is made by the team that has a very weird, almost cult-like following in Dramaland, who has created a very interesting IP back in the 2010s called Mao Pian Moral Peanuts, a drama that's focused on. The bottom of the society, ordinary people who are con artists, masters of fraud, and there's so many twists and turns and super clever scheming. And that series of dramas that happened back in 2010, 2012, 2015 is one of the most unique Chinese dramas ever existed in Chinese drama land. And this drama was made after that. The director did send out this Weibo、uh, after this whole thing finished airing, talking about they encountered. A lot of difficulties of putting this work out, but not being specific. So they'll just keep it to themselves and never let public know what really happened to cause this drama to be delayed for six entire years. And then when you look at the drama itself, it is also unique because you don't see any other drama of this type of story now. Essentially, the idea of heroes like the American television series of people having. Unusual superpowers. For this drama's version, the only difference is that they aren't born with it. They happen to come across strange things, objects that give them power. I guess if they naturally have the power, it wouldn't pass censorship, huh? <laughs> all in all, this is so unique that I don't think you're gonna see another one like this this year or even in the next couple of years. At the beginning, you'll see a very short clip of something happens a year or two ago before the main timeline of this story. The tragedy that happens to our male lead character. Not gonna spoil it for you. Go and watch it yourself. That propelled him to do things and search for things, and that leads to the current timeline. He knows there are a lot of strange objects, and they all were created back in Mingguo time, Republic of China setting time. These things look like ordinary daily objects, such as a ring. A watch, a pair of glasses, random things. But each of those objects has special powers, such as controlling time, jumping through space, change your appearance. He's convinced that the tragedy that happened to him is due to somebody used a special object of this kind. But exactly what it is, he doesn't know. Who did it? He doesn't know. And his life is on the search. As it goes on, he comes across different people who joins the team. Eventually, you form a four to five main character core team. They'll come across two main organizations who are also trying to collect all those objects. Seemingly, they're gonna have a big conspiracy behind the scene and that type of story. And then eventually, you find out there's actually more about it. In a way, the 36 episodes of this drama is like the trailer. Of a much bigger story that you feel the creators are cooking up, but as the first season already got delayed six years, and it just doesn't seem to be very likely they're gonna have a second season. Audiences are joking. If you want to make it, make it now. Otherwise, the actors are all gonna get too old. I've watched the whole thing. I ran through it for three days nonstop, and I almost didn't really fast forward it. And this is probably one of the hardest dramas for me to rate ever because there are certain things. This drama did so much better and so well than 99% of other Chinese dramas that it deserves a lot of for them. Like the director himself said, this is too old a drama. When it was made, they were so restricted with resources 
that <laughs> the expression of the great idea is very lacking in pretty much every aspect. So if you look at that side of the production quality side, it just pressed down the rating so much. I'll put it at a one gold mine, okay? It's definitely on the positive end. I'm gonna talk first about the good things and actually in order of the most important thing, why I think this drama has just such special quality and then <laughs> lesser and lesser important points, but still making this drama interesting. So the most unique thing about this drama is it is created by this team that is known to be able to write really old school, well-written, paced, plot, twists, characters, exciting page turner stories. They carry on the quality of that to this drama where although the whole premise of the story is definitely fantastical about superpower objects that can create all kinds of drama, spectacular things on screen for the audience, they set up a rule for their story and they follow it through. Everything that happens in this drama, what people can do, cannot do, how people take advantage of certain objects' ability and limitation to coax other people, to set up traps, to get themselves out of trouble, and to have those steps and steps of chess play of all kinds of clever people fighting against each other. With the rules they set up, it all works out. The logic is tight. And some of the logics and twists are very clever. And <laughs> you cannot say that for 99% of Chinese dramas these days. Pre-school level mistakes that you see in every kind of dramas, period, contemporary, fantasy, whatever. Now you look at all the crap that's prettier, well packaged and shot and produced of 2022. You're just like, ah, oh. I just so miss the old days where intelligent people write intelligent script that actually makes sense. We're not asking for rocket science, we're just asking for things that actually works out. If you want a worked out drama that has a lot of fantastical element, you're not gonna get a better one this year, probably. Second, let's be honest, you don't have superpower contemporary dramas these days in Chinese drama land, okay? For one reason or another, that's not a genre that exists anymore. This is the only one you're gonna get. The third thing that's really good about the drama, particularly because of it's old, when you watch it, you kind of like go into a time tunnel and you realize 2022 Chinese dramas are actually really different from 2016 dramas. Which is in this drama, the importance of tell a good story overrides the importance of making actors look good. Which unfortunately has become less and less common in Chinese drama these days. Whether it's a serious production, whether it's a not so serious production, whether it's a highly claimed or just crap drama, they are hoping to promote dramas based on the popularity of their leads, whether it's like the idol ones or even the veteran actor ones, reputable ones who've been working in the industry for decades. Still, you have this, almost like the entire industry has lost its compass. What's the thing that can bring people into watching the drama? Oh, it features this star. Where's this drama? There's no star in the drama. And honestly, a lot of actors are so amateur. <laughs> their acting sometimes just needs a big whip and you just want to jump in and say come on get an acting coach and sort out this thing because you're just making it like crap so actors their own fame and like is almost invisible in this drama and the star of record of strange things is the story itself and somehow that is almost impossible to have now in 2022 and it's so sad and unfortunate in a way, when you watch this drama, you just feel, oh, I'm so happy to be able to see a drama like this where like, even in the live comments, you wouldn't see fandom water down the comments with 10 copied same line of, oh, this idol is so good looking. Oh my God, this is so, his acting is so great. And you're not going to see that. Everybody's just talking about the plot. Nobody's talking about the actors. Thank heavens. And it just makes me like this drama that much more because it doesn't have all the shit that's attached to one person's fame decides everything and the justice of everything. Then I just pick out the personal point is <laughs> I was so happy to see Zhang Tao showing up. You're not gonna see this character and this actor until much later. And I went into this drama blind. I had no idea who are in it. So when he showed up, I'm like, oh, are you? And he plays the most theatrical, most playful, most interesting role of this drama. Probably he's the most professionally trained actor, everything considered, his posture, his performance, his line delivery, his ability to literally change his vocal quality to suit his particular interesting role. Previously, I've watched a lot of dramas with him as supporting roles. 
usually as the bad guy. That's why a lot of people, when they first saw his role in Under the Skin, they thought he's the bad guy because <laughs> he just has the bad guy vibe. In the drama, he kind of comes out as a bad guy too, but he's much more interesting than that. And I'm just so happy to be able to see I didn't expect this actor in it. And I just liked his role so much. Those are the great things about this drama. Super unique good point. Then let's talk about the bad things because it's not perfect. The director himself, the producer himself, like everybody who worked on this drama themselves agree. In 2022, looking back at 2016 produced drama, so many things can be improved. The very obvious thing is production quality is lacking everything considered. Special effects, sets, budget. And you can tell they tried their best, but they were still far away from being a very well-oiled, finely tuned, matured industrial standard production. And often you're gonna have to just basically convince yourself. It's like, yeah, let's keep watch, watch it. Just focus on the story. Just forget about how embarrassingly unprofessional it looks at this point. Get yourself prepared. Second thing, it does give you the very strong vibe of most of the actors are so unprofessional that you forgive them. Basically, sometimes their acting is just so not like they've been trained that it takes you out of the illusion of a visual story. Unless you are a Moral Peanuts fan, some people show up and you're gonna get like that nostalgia thing and you're like, oh, I'm so happy to see him or her that you ignore just how unprofessional their acting can be at times. I guess even if when you don't understand Mandarin Chinese and you can only read subtitles, you watch his drama, you're gonna get like <laughs> very, very mm, at times. And that acting, that timing, like the sense of timing when two people are talking and how they should act at certain points is still off the beat. <laughs> then you're like, ah, come on, can we just reshoot that scene? Because it looks so bad. So these are the two major, major drawback of this story. And obviously, if you fall in love with the story, then the third thing is who knows if they're ever going to make the second season. And a lot of the things they've set up, the clues they've buried and twists and turns that you see at the end of the story may never get explained. Overall, The Record of Strange Things is a drama that actually had a really good base of story, characters, exciting plots and twists and turns, ideas. That's probably out of 10, you'd say the idea of the story and its bones is worth eight. But then when it got executed and realized three out of 10, four out of 10 maximum. So it is a good base that just limited by so many things that at the end, the performance and expression of it is lacking in a pity. And the director even said, basically, now it's six years later and we believe most of the 2022 drama audiences will not care for this, this kind of production quality anymore. And I agree, for most of the audiences who do not have any emotional attachment to this crew, to this creative team, to their moral peanuts days, and to any of the background stories, knowing nothing. Okay, if you don't know, it's a 2016 drama. You just click the open and watch it. And for one episode, you're gonna go, who made this? Did somebody just randomly grab some people on the street and went shooting outside of their apartment on the street to make this <laughs> drama? Like it looks just so bad in so many ways. But somehow I actually managed to stick through. It's really unusual. So I don't think there's gonna be another drama like this in 2022 and probably in the next five years also, unless the team itself go and make another drama. It really can only be made by this team and these people. I wouldn't recommend if you're not really that much of a lover of Chinese dramas to go explore this one. And if you don't have that much free time, there are many, many more dramas that probably is more suitable for 2022 audiences to watch, whether it's a Chinese drama or other countries' productions. But for everyone who is very, let's say, seasoned watchers of Chinese dramas and you're curious about this really unusual project, uh, it's still worth your time exploring it a bit. Some parts of the plot will make you very happy, but no, <laughs> you would also have to grab your fist and just bear through some of the embarrassingly bad moments. So that's Avenue X's review on the drama Yi Wu Zhi, The Record of Strange Things. Make up your own mind about whether you should test this one out. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.